Yo, what's going on, guys? I know it's been a long time since I've done like a commentary type video on this channel. I've been dabbling with other games and I just really haven't had much to talk about. Uh, you can tell that I'm back to playing Grand Blue again because we do have new content to cover. There's a lot of things that we can, I have to go over that are, I rather I want to go over. So it should be pretty fun here. Today we'll be looking at the newest tier four class, uh, that being Chrysor, Chrysor, whatever you want to call it. I'm gonna call it Chrysor. Uh, hopefully that's okay with you guys. And if it's not, well, you can turn off the video. Sorry, I ain't good at pronouncing things. Now, before I start that, I do want to mention that there's a couple other things that I have not covered in the past. But what that may be characters like now. I do have Europa and a bunch of other characters in my pool. So if, if you guys want to see like me covering other things that I uh, haven't really covered in the past, that also includes Doctor, uh, then leave it in the comments and I'll try to go over it. If not, well, I won't do it. That's how it is. But as I mentioned, today we're looking at the newest class, Chrysor. This class is kind of like a combination of Kango and Glorybringer combined into one. While it's focusing on Ogi damage, it does also give you other utility in terms of damage that's not Ogi based as in auto wise. So it's pretty, pretty good, pretty good. It's really, really offensive. It has like almost no defensive value. So unless your team has defensive value, may that be a defensive character like Alex or Athena, you're gonna have a hard time using this as your main solo class. But if you do, you should have no problem going through content with this class. Now, this class specializes in two weapons, being the Saber and Katana, very similar to something like Glorybringer, where it also did Saber and Katana. So keep that in mind, that it has some of the best weapons in the game, being Saber and Katana. So really, really good. Now, with a new class, we do have a ton of new skills to cover. The first new skill we'll be looking at is Blade Swamp. Now, with this skill, it adds a whole new mechanic to your weapon grid. Before, we had a standard 10 weapon grid where one weapon was the main hand and we had nine sub weapons that gave passive skills to your overall damage. Now, it's a little bit different. Take a look at it. Uh, normally, I wouldn't do this, but take a little quick look at it. You, you can see there that you have a little color highlighted here in the top left corner of your weapon grid. This is your auxiliary, or auxiliary slot. My fault for pronouncing that wrong. I'm not gonna be pronouncing it well, too well, at least during this video. So do bear with me. I'm really bad at pronouncing stuff. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. But as I mentioned, in, auxiliary, in your auxiliary slot, <laughs> you have any weapon that can be used by this class. Those weapons will be swamped in depending on when you Ogi. So for example here, I have Ultima as my main hand and Dark Angel Olivia's Fallen Sword as my uh, second slot. So whenever I, I Ogi with um, my Ultima, it will swamp into my Fallen Sword. There are skills that take advantage of this, but when I'll get to them, I get to them. Just know that using your uh, first skill will swamp in your other weapon. So for me, it will swamp in my Fallen Sword. And when I use that skill again, it will swamp back to my Ultima. Do note that whatever weapon is your main weapon at the time is what's going to be your Ogi um, effect. So like, for example, the Fallen Sword Ogi effect is a barrier, while Ultima is dark attack up and double attack. Also, you can Blade Swamp. You do gain the ability of getting CA specs increased. Um, they increase your uh, damage and your uh, Ogi cap. So pretty cool, pretty cool. The next skill we're looking at here is Dual Arts. Dual Arts is pretty much the go-to ability on this skill, um, on this class rather, has a very low cooldown and a very decent uptime being two turns. And during this uh, skill, you gain double Ogi. So, as I mentioned before, you have two weapons now. So with dual arch, each of those weapons will get their Ogi effect. 
and it's very good because it only requires a 100% charge bar because this class does not gain 200 like Kango. So it's very cool. You do get more value out of this class than something like Kango because usually with Kango, you will have your Ogi overlap each other. Now with this, you have two different Ogi effects where you can really combine to get some really good buffs running on your team. Keep in mind, if you need something in that slot, though, for this effect to happen, it's only going to work if you have something in your slot. The next skill, which also is really hard to pronounce, dip tights, I think, or teach, whatever you want to call it. I'm going to call it a dip because that's the easiest I can do. Now, with this class or with this skill, it's kind of similar to dancer's skill where it, you gain double strike. So with this skill, you gain double strike and elemental bonus damage to the caster which is pretty good but you also gain oh uh, you also lose 20 percent charge bar and it can only be used when you have something in your auxiliary uh, your auxiliary slot so it's okay uh, i wouldn't say this is like a really go-to skill do note that it's, it's ready in two turns so you can't use it off the bat you have to wait kind of like uh, dancer skill, dancer skill. I believe dancer skill was four turns though. That's how they try to balance out these really strong skills is by adding that ready effect. So you can't use it at the very beginning of a fight. It's okay though. It's an okay skill. I don't think it's, I don't think it's nearly as good as dual arts. The uptime on it is pretty, it's okay. Three turns, I think two turns. That's okay. But I think dual arts is definitely the real skill that you really want to get value out of. And for the last skill we'll be looking at here, Arum's Flow. Um, this one is just a basic nuke. It's like basic nuke on pretty much every class. This gives you 20% charge bar. Do know if you have something in your auxiliary slot, you do gain double nuke. So that's very good. You gain 40% charge bar. Um, the cooldown kind of hefty though. Seven turns, I feel this is a little bit too high to really call it valuable. The damage is not that great. So it's not something I would really put in unless you have all your, your other eggs covered like debuffs, your clear, whatever you need for the raid. Then this would be like a last thought. But to be honest, the first two skills is so much better than this skill. I don't really see a point of bringing this skill like ever. Maybe for a one turn setup though. But that's about it with this class. You know, class is not super hard like the last class, <clears throat> Rune Slayer. So the class is just kind of simple. Now we're gonna be looking at the support skills. I didn't mention the support skills I actually already mentioned earlier, but we'll go over them again. Dual Blaze Authority is the skill where I mentioned that whenever you Ogi, you do swamp to your other weapon. Um, it also boosts your stats. I did not mention that part, but you do get a boost to your stats. It's okay. Uh, to be honest, if you're running dual, uh, dual arts, then you're not really gonna get much value out of dual blades authority. Cause technically, you, well, you technically you do because when you Ogi, you get both Ogi effects and that's because of dual blades authority. But the way that they intended it, you're not gonna get much out of it because you're gonna swamp right back to your same weapon. So it's okay though. Mail breaker is uh, whenever your auxiliary weapon is equipped, you have a chance of lowering the foe's defense upon multi-attack. Do note this is stackable, very good in raids like Ultimate Bahamut because stackable defense lasts the whole fight. Uh, unlike normal defense down, which is immune, it's immune to after 50. So it's pretty okay for a raid like that. I mean, I wouldn't bring it because doesn't you don't really need defense now at this point because everybody blows it up anyway in seconds so you might want to bring phalanx but these are little tips i guess for the people who want to do it now this class has some of the best mastery bonus and this is something that people don't really pay much attention to and i think people should really take more time and look at at it with this class getting it to level 20 you gain 30 percent double attack rate now, combine that with Ultima and other weapons, you're gonna easily cap out your double attack rate, where when you're playing this class, you may not wanna focus on Trivium 
rather you want to look at weapons like AK, the AK weapon on Earth. I forgot the name of it. The one that comes with Yugen. That's more value than something like Trivium because of the way that Trivium works. Even though Trivium has like, you know, less, uh, had more uh, percent on it. But because of the fact that you're most likely going to overcap your double attack, it kind of has um, a diminishing value. So do know on this class that double attack has definitely had a lot of diminishing value because you're going to cap it very easily on this class. Especially if you run the Ultima as your main hand, it's going to cap like Ultima as a passive, what, 25? Then your Ogi is 40, 40, 25, 30, boom, already 95. What you going to do? So. Do note, this is very important. When you're looking at this class in your weapon pool, you're gonna have to take time and look at your uh, what's in your pool when it comes to multi-attack because you don't wanna really go over the 100% double attack because you're not gaining anything out of it. You're gaining nothing. So for people who are running the double attack weapons like Alex uh, Dagger for Earth players, you don't need it on this class. It does nothing pretty much. That's a little tip though. I am gonna be changing up the way I do these videos. Normally, I do my videos, where I do a little uh, gameplay right after. I'm actually not gonna be doing gameplay this time. I kinda of wanted to do like a uh, talking video, I guess. And then separate, I'll do gameplay. So do tell me how you feel about that. If you don't like it, leave it in the comments. I, I won't do it again next time. But I am gonna try doing it this way to split them up, make it a little bit easier. Cause some people don't wanna hear my voice. My voice sucks, so. But thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.